control it. Yeah. I that's the problem with a lot of people. You think that you can control God. God is not going to move how you want him to move. There is something called spiritual protocol. First the sacrifice, then the fire, then the glory, then he dwells. First the sacrifice, then the fire, then the glory, then he dwells. First the sacrifice. Then the fire, then his glory, then he dwells. You can't have it any other way. It can't have it any other way. First the fire, then the sacrifice. Then his glory, then he dwells. I want you to dwell, God. I want you to live here. I want you to dwell, God. I want you to live here. Live in my life, oh God. Live in my life, oh God. Live in my life, oh God. Well, well, well. <laughs> Welcome everybody on the Midnight Watch. I pray, that, I pray that you can see me. I am excited. I am so stirred. Oh my God. I'm saying, listen, y'all better get ready. Listen, it's a new day, but it's midnight. And you know what happened at midnight? There's a whole lot of activity going on at this watch, but the people of God is here. And so I'm excited. Welcome to this. Welcome to the, the third day. Okay. We're into the third day now. And so it has been nothing short of amazing. It has been phenomenal. I mean, the God we serve is it's mighty. All I can do is say, when he when he tells you to do something, respond and respond quickly. Listen, uh, 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 I'm excited about the man of God that's coming forth at midnight. I know some of you all or the ministry by his spirit or strike force. I know some of you all couldn't rest if you tried because the woman of God came back to support again tonight. My 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 my, my sis, I called my comrade, Prophet Nicole Armstrong set us ablaze. Listen, from the time it started, even with the pastor Emmanuel, we give God praise for her and her husband who's who is handling all the media stuff for us. Everyone has been amazing. You talk about moving from glory to glory to glory. And I'm talking about just moving um, because God keep downloading intel and information into us. So I want to say if, whether you're new in the room, um, whether you're new on the Facebook side of it, listen, there's a green button at the top uh, right over Strikeforce BHS. Hit that. So when this club is, is, is hosting things, you'll be able to be a part. And so this is not over. 
over. This is just the beginning of the third day. Anything know anything about the third day? The third day res it has everything to do with resurrection and coming up. But listen, resurrection that speaks for itself. Reviving the dead thing, coming to life after you've been left for dead. And so I'm excited about what's going to happen. I give honor to each and every marksman that came forth and delivered to us and struck with fire. I thank God for the healing, the breaking, the deliverance. Some altars got so smashed that when the fire hit it, honey, I'm telling you, if you tried to go back, you won't be able to because what you was going back to, it ain't even there because it's been smashed. So hallelujah, I am excited. We have that awesome woman of God in the room, in the room. Octavia Prophet, Octavia Bonds is here. Uh, now, I, listen, I'm so excited. I need to calm myself down. I, I just need to calm myself down for a minute. We got Prophet Sherry Shepherd back in the room. Listen, she came through at that 3 p.m. watch and broke down. Listen, I had uh, destroying evil altars, and then she turned around and did drug enforcement agency. And she said, we have been deputized uh -huh, to enforce God's agenda. And so we, we want to give God praise for her. Everyone in the room. Uh, Dr. Travis is back down in the audience. And so we know that some, some things are going on. Listen, you have time. We have time while we are getting this thing together. You really do have time to like, tag, share, ping some people in the room. Some people probably ro roaming through clubhouse streets. They know they need to be in here for a life change and transformation anointing that I am looking for. Listen, I'm going to ask one, 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 of, one of Strike Force or one of the intercessors to lead us in prayer. And then right after that, um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask Prophet Octavia Bonds, who I, I, I know she's a very special uh, woman of God. I'm going to ask Prophet Octavia Bonds to come forth right after we lead prayer. And then right after her, we're going to let this man of God loose. Um, listen, I'm just meeting him. He already look a good name will follow you. And listen, he is he is well spoken of. He comes highly recommended. Many people know him already. And so I'm excited. It was like, well, am I the only one didn't get the memo? Like I just told him in the background and God said, don't 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 worry about it. You won't forget them after tonight or after this morning. So I am so excited. I mean, our spirits bore witness already. We just connected. So that already tells me a lot about him. I feel like I'm his sister already. I feel like I could do a drive by and just sit and just have fun with him. So I, I, I want to give honor to him. Uh, and uh, so um, woman of God, I'm going to ask you to come forth, release a prayer in here. Then we're going to hear from Prophet Octavia Bonds. And then right after that, we want to get started with this Midnight Watch with Dr. Travis Wilkins. I can't thank him enough. So I am ready and I am charged. Come on, woman of God, and lead us into prayer. Jackie J. magnify you we glorify you for all that you have done oh god over the course of the past two days god we honor you not just for who you what you have done but for who you are we thank you lord god hallelujah as we step into a new day we thank you that this is the day that you have made we will rejoice and we will be glad in it we rejoice oh god with anticipation for what is in store We uh we for for just with the renewing of the mind, the the reviving in us, oh God, hallelujah. We thank you, oh God for just the transformation, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for every altar that has been destroyed destroy in our lives and as we forward into day three. Father, we pray that you continue to bless the visionary, Father Apostle. Angela, Tom, Angela Thomas, God, meet every need. Hallelujah. We thank you right now that you are even blessing uh, those who are working behind the scene. Pastor Emmanuel.
Priscilla and her husband and, and, and uh, Proc, we thank you right now, even for our speaker on tonight. We pray, Father, that you will just bless him, oh God, as he brings forth your word. Hallelujah. We thank you that his words will go out with fire attached. And it will burn up everything that's in us, oh God, that is keeping us from moving forward in you. We thank you right now by faith in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will have your way in this session, oh God. We we just ask you to come in like a mighty rushing wind and have your way. We open our hearts to you on tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Octavia, are you there? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Midnight Watch portion of this uh this this what is this called the strike a thon that yes. we got going on yes the strike a thon <laughs> yeah welcome to the strike a thon i'm gonna ask everybody um in on the facebook page please like and share the page because the man of god carries weight in his words uh he has a, a club in clubhouse called the prayer lab if you have never been in his room, you do need to uh, do a drive-by. I'm telling you, if you do a drive-by, you will not regret doing a drive-by. For those of you here in Clubhouse, please share this broadcast. I am telling you, you are in for a treat. This man of God does not play with the enemy at all. Now, I don't I don't know what he's been through personally because all I ever heard him uh talk about on uh Clubhouse is the word of God, but the weight on his words lets you know that he had an experience. And whatever that experience was, we are glad we glad you had one, Dr. Uh Travis, because the weight on your words you couldn't get that no other way but through experience and study and so and, and being in the face of god and we know that every experience that we have that's traumatic god does not waste those experiences now it's up to you to get the lesson from it but god never wastes the experience so i'm going to turn this back over to apostle angela but i'm telling you that you are in for a real treat. He don't play with the enemy. He don't play with God. And he has a word in his mouth. He's a glory carrier. And I know that whatever comes out his mouth, that is going to bless you in this midnight watch. So I'm going to turn this back over to Apostle Angela. And I'm assuming that the next voice you hear after her will be Dr. Travis Wilkins. I mean, he is a bombshell. And it's back over into your hands. Thank you so much for uh, introducing him. Yes, I must do a drive-by. That is so funny that she said a drive-by. I just met him and I'm already talking about doing a drive-by to where he's at already. So God is amazing. I have to do that. You know that prayer thing. You know that's my heart. That's my passion. Is there anybody feel like they running already and he ain't even said the first word yet? My God, that's the expectation that I am ready for. You have to be in expectation. So you know, I've had many different looks, but this time I'll say, nah, I ain't slinging no hair tonight because I feel like what he getting ready to come with, <laughs> I got the right hair dress on. So without further ado, I want to listen. I honor everybody in the room in this perspective places. Thank you so much. You don't have to come in here. So whatever reason that the Holy Ghost brought you in here, you come in to support. We welcome you. Enjoy yourself. Let your hair down wherever you're at. Make sure you got room to fall out, lay out, run, 
whatever. I hope you can shout if you need to, but I am excited. I do not want to hold him no longer than the Holy Ghost need him to be here. So I want to say welcome again. Thank you so much. This is a, a, a strike a and we are destroying evil altars. The Lord gave me a dream not too long ago. It ain't haven't even been a good three weeks. He gave me the letters DEA. I asked him, what was it? I wrote it down. He said, destroy evil altars. So he said, this, this, this whole time he's been giving us intel and information to knowledge that we probably was ignorant of or just overlook or just think it wasn't worthy but i'm here to tell you with what we've learned today we've been in school we have been in school and i ain't nothing like getting empowered to be able to take and strike back at the enemy that's been tormenting you your bloodline and everything connected to you i'm getting ready to release the man of god dr travis it is on you I honor you. I welcome you. Let the Lord have his way. You are not restricted at all. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I trust that all is well. Uh, trust that you can hear me. Um, to God be the glory. Give me one second. want to make sure that I do what they told me to do. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, God bless you. To God be the glory. Uh, I give honor to God who is the head of my life. Uh, to my pastors, Dr. Nikita Garris Watson and Bishop James Watson of the Words of Deliverance Worldwide Ministry family. Thank God for each and every one of them. I promise you, I love my spiritual parents and my pastors. And I'm so thankful uh, to the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, visionary apostle, uh, Dr. Angela D. Thomas, and to everybody who has come before me, to God be the glory. Listen, I'm so excited. There is a word from the Lord. Um, and I really am excited to everybody that has watching and to everybody who has been engaging thus far. If you will grab your Bibles, um, we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 13, um, and I'm going to start at uh, the 14th verse, 2 Kings chapter 13, and I'm going to start at the 14th verse, 2 Kings chapter 13, and I'm going to start at the 14th verse, and you'll hear these words right here, and it says, now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said unto the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And put his hand, and he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hand. Verse 17. And he said, Open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou shouldest have struck, for you should have smitten five or six times. Then hast thou smitten Syria, till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria, but thrice. And Elisha died and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. Verse 19. And the man of God said, was wroth with him and said, thou shalt have smitten him five or six times. Then thou hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas thou now hast smite Syria, but thrice. If I were to tag this tonight with a simple thought at this strikeathon, it would simply be this, beloved: Don't stop short. Okay, type that in the comments. Put that in your uh, uh, hashtag on Facebook. Don't stop short. Don't stop short. Uh, let us pray, Father. We thank you. We give your name glory. We give your name honor, and we praise you for you are the God of our love, and you are the God of our soul. Have your that have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't stop short. All right, I'm going to set the tone like this. Uh, anybody and everybody understands um, the excitement behind driving. You understand 
that when you first get behind the wheel of a car, you are excited, you have your license, you are understanding the road, you're learning the aspects of transition, and you're learning what it is to stop, you're learning what it is to go, you're learning what it is to yield, you are learning what it is to look both directions before going. Um, and one of the most dangerous things that you can do when you are driving is stop short. Okay, hope this blesses somebody already. Because watch this, beloved. If you stop short, you run the risk of creating destruction for everybody who is following you because of the simple fact that they are trusting that you know what you're doing on the road. I hope this is blessing somebody already. And because one of the most dangerous things to do is stop short because you panicked or you stopped short because you didn't see something in your blind side. You stopped short because you weren't fully paying attention to the road and, and something in front of you causes you to jump real quickly and you stop short. But the problem with stopping short is watch this. The people behind you now run the risk of running in all oh God in the back of you because you stopped short when you were supposed to keep up the pace uh, so that everybody with you uh, would not run into an accident. Now, I had to struggle and ask God, what in the world did this have to do with the strike -a Because I could have went to the scripture where we dealt with the corrupt altars and, and the man of God uh, 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 began to destroy the altar and the, uh, uh, and, the, and the corrupt people tried to snatch him from the altar and his arm got, and the man's uh, hand got crippled and he began to say, altar, altar, and they destroyed all the altar. But God wouldn't let me stay there. And I said, God, I don't know why. And I said, but this is strike the altar. We could deal about all of the uh, 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 strange fire that is seemingly being put on the altars of God in this dispensation of time where people are getting elevated before getting out evaluated. We're dealing with people who have more uh, uh, affirmation papers than they do have psychoanalysis. We're dealing with people who are bipolar bishops and schizophrenic uh, missionaries and, 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 and split personality prophets. We're, we're dealing with people who literally are dealing with prophets trauma because we got prophets out here who are telling you basic level stuff that they learned about you in social media but not in prayer and I said God then how are we dealing with the people who are saying listen I'm sick of these lying prophets I'm sick of these false prophets I'm sick of false hope and how do I navigate and I ask God how in the world does this text have anything to do with where the people are because there are some people out here that say I don't need another house car clothes prophet but I need somebody to help me navigate through my trauma. I need somebody to help me navigate through my emotional situation. I need somebody to help me not walk away from ministry. And I said, God, how does this particular scripture have anything to do with that? And that's when God said, tell the people, don't stop short. And I said, God, what are you saying? He says, because my people have got to a place where they get to the uh they get to the tip of victory and then they lose. They get to the tip. They get to the iceberg of breakthrough and then they stop short. They get to the place of being consistently clean and then we stop short. We finally get deliverance and we get it purged out of the bucket and, and, and we bind and rebuke and, 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 and we go to conferences and we sow seeds and, 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 and all of that stuff. And God says, my people have been stopping short. What do I mean? We, we we go as far as the praise breaker, but we stop short. We go as far as the prophecy, failing to realize that with every prophecy, there is a process. And anybody who does not tell you that is giving you false hope because I don't understand how we are going through this dispensation of time where people are handing you prophecies and not helping you understand that there must be a process that goes with that word. Don't stop short. So if you look at this exegetically and hermeneutically and homiletically and use your theological lens in this biblical text, you understand that we are dealing with generational disobedience. Everybody in this text has been acting crazy. Everybody in this text has lost their mind. Everybody in this text has done what they want to do from the grandfather on down to the, you know, to the grandson, to the great. Everybody has messed up and you have the prophet in transition. 
Because everybody, what do you do when there is generational corruptibility? Oh, God, what do you do when you are trying to navigate through generational corruptibility, generational perversion, generational trauma? Come on here. And I talked to some women and men of God on here tonight that say, I'm trying to navigate through generational corruptibility. I'm trying to be the prophet, but I got perversion in my bloodline. I'm trying to be the preacher, but I've got all kind of uh, 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 struggles in my bloodline. I'm trying to be the evangelist, but I got all kind of uh, battles. Come on here. Uh, you come on here. I'm talking to some people tonight that say I want to be a worshiper, but I can't stop smoking weed. Oh, God, I understand my mantle, but I battle with masturbation. Come on here. Who can I talk to tonight that say, listen, I understand what it is to, under, to, to embrace a breakthrough, huh? but I can't put down the bottle. I don't have a problem with praying, but I also got an issue with Patron. Come on. I'm talking to some real people at midnight that say I've been trying to get victory here, but I keep stopping short. I keep trying to get a win, but I keep stopping short. My children don't have a daddy. I keep stopping short. I'm trying to navigate through life, but I keep stopping short. I'm suicidal and saved. I keep, oh, God, I keep stopping short. Oh, God, I know I got a calling, but I got some clinical issues. I keep stopping short. This must be the season that if that's the case, theology must marry therapy. And I say it again, theology must marry therapy because some of us are in the fight of our life. We look wonderful in pulpits. We look wonderful in services. We look wonderful at conferences. But then we navigate through problems. We got a kryptonite at home. Come on here. Who am I talking to tonight that will be honest and say, I love God, but I keep stopping short. I'm a praiser, but I keep stopping short. I'm a worshiper, but I keep stopping short. I love the Lord, but I keep stopping short. This word is for you. Don't stop short. So the, the, the prophet, the prophet, the prophet gets sick and the prophet is dying and the prophet is in transition. What do you do when the presence, what do you do when the presence of the prophetic in your life is at the place of a getting, of getting ready to die off? Yeah, let me say that again. What do you do uh, when the presence of the prophetic seemingly is getting ready uh, to die off? There is no thus saith the Lord. There are no turn around and touch your neighbor seasons. <laughs> Have you ever had to navigate through a season like that where you were trying to figure out how do I make it? When what have you ever been in a place uh, where you're not hearing anything, uh, where you're not hearing any word, uh, where you're not getting any clarity, where you're not getting any assurance? Uh, oh, 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 have you ever been to a place uh, where you say, Lord, uh, I'm trying to hear you, I'm trying to get clarity, I'm trying to get understanding, but it's dying off. I'm talking to some people that say, I need a little more assurance before this decision that I make. So Elisha, Elisha, the Bible says Elisha is sick. Elisha is growing old. He's growing old, the Bible says. And Elisha uh, and, and Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof, uh, he understood who the prophet was in his life. Uh, see, there's a danger when you don't understand the power of the prophetic in your life. Uh, there's a danger when you dummy down the prophetic just to a house, a car, and some clothes. Uh, but no, 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 no. When you understand the placement of the prophetic in your life, you don't stop short. When you understand that there is more to you than that me than what meets the eye, you don't stop short. When you know you got a mantle and you got a mandate, uh, you don't stop short. Uh, when you know you are navigating and pushing through circumstances, you don't stop short. When you 
you understand that you are trying to get to the place uh, called your prophetic place, you don't stop short. And so Elisha said to Joash, what I want you to do is I want you to take a bow and an arrow. And so he took a bow and an arrow, which lets me know the first thing in this season of the strike the first thing I want you to know in this season, you've got to have the right thing in your hand. Woo! God have mercy. In order for you not to stop short, can I say it again? You got to have the right thing in your hand. Come on, Zion. You got to have the right tool in your hand. The prophet, while he was in transition, tells Joash the king, get a bow and arrow because they have already dealt with the threat of getting uh, defeated. And when you got the threat of being defeated, you got to have the right tools in your hand. Yeah. God have mercy. Who is the Holy Ghost talking to? When you are running the risk of being defeated, uh, you got to have the right tools in your hand. If you want to destroy altars that are not from God, uh, you got to have the right tools in your hand. If you're going to deconstruct uh, the plots, the plans, and the schemes of the enemy, you got to have the right tools in your hand. If you're going to do an assignment in the kingdom, you got to have the right tools in your hand. Oh, God, you cannot destroy evil altars uh, in public uh, and build them in private. <laughs> Can I say that again? You cannot destroy, uh, oh, God, evil altars uh, in public, uh, but then want to construct them in private. Uh, you, oh, God, uh, you can't prophesy to someone in public, uh, but then want to pervert them in private. Uh, Oh, God, you can't try to celebrate someone in public, but then you want to sabotage them in private. Oh, God, they cannot be your spiritual son and daughter in public, but then be your side piece in private. You cannot destroy evil altars in public and then try to construct them, oh, God, in private. So Elisha tells him, he says, take the bow and the arrow. You've got to have the right tool. The first thing you got to do is you go if you're gonna build something, if you're gonna build tabaka seal of a hoya, if you're gonna build something productive, you gotta have the right tools. You gotta have the right tools. Some of us, God is delivering us from the tools that have been in our hand because they didn't have the ability to build nothing. Come on here. You 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 were trying to build something with the wrong tools. That's like trying to cut something sharp with a butter knife or a plastic knife. That's the wrong tool. Come on here. That's not sharp enough. My kosiya That's not precise enough. That's not precise enough. And so Elisha says, take a bow and arrow. And he took unto him a bow and arrow. And he said to the king of Israel, put your hand upon the bow. So first thing you got, watch this. Huh? First thing you got, you got the right tool. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. You got the right tool. That's the first thing you got. You got the right tool. Okay. And then the prophet says, put, uh, put your hand on the bow. You have to put your hand on the bow. And then the Bible says he put his hand upon he put his hand upon it. So he put his hand on the bow. So the first thing is I gotta have the right tools. Number two, I've got to position myself correctly. Yeah, I've got to position myself correctly. He wasn't handling some small tool. He was handling a bow and an arrow. He was handling an, a bow and an arrow. You see, you've got to, number one, have the right tool, and then you got to position yourself correctly. When you destroy evil altars, you've got to have the right tool, and you've got to position yourself correctly. Positioning yourself correctly means you've got to be okay if you have to stand alone. Position yourself correctly means you got to be okay if you are not everybody's everything. Positioning yourself correctly means you got to be okay if you don't have a busy itinerary. Positioning yourself correctly means you got to be okay if he assigns you to go minister at Chick-fil-A and not at somebody's holy convocation. So positioning yourself correctly has to be you being okay if God assigns you to the wilderness when you thought he was going to assign you to the mountaintop. 
positioning yourself correctly means you got to know what it is to be a servant uh, before you want somebody to serve you. Uh, positioning yourself correctly is if nobody likes your status on Facebook, uh, you post it anyway when you know God told you to say it. Positioning yourself correctly is when you sacrifice sleep, uh, when God, when you want to get another hour, but God tells you to get up because uh, you got to understand uh, we're at 1239 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this is the witching hour. This is the darkest hour of the night. Uh, warlocks are not glad that we're meeting. Witches are not glad that we're meeting. Demons are not happy that we're gathering. If it was up to them, we would have all kinds of problems. But when you have dominion over this region, when you have jurisdiction in this time frame, you let the enemy know, no, 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 no. I've got the right tools and I'm positioned correctly. I got a stance that is not unstable. I got a posture that cannot be broken. When you understand what it is, to have the right tools and don't stop short. Don't, don't stop short. Position yourself correctly. Some of y'all keep thinking you're in transition and God says stay right at that ministry. Position yourself correctly. Some of y'all are, are, are in a position where you're trying not to make an emotional decision. Position yourself correctly. Some of you are saying I need to plant my feet. Position yourself correctly. And so Elisha, the next thing it says is that Elisha put his hands upon the king's hand. Ah, I hope this blesses somebody real hit good. So here's Elisha's hand. Watch this. Uh, let me give you this virtual demonstration. Here's Elisha's hand on the bow and arrow. And then the prophet, uh, even in a sick state, uh, a transitional state, uh, uh, oh God, a drained state, puts his hand, uh, oh God, on uh, King Joash's hand, which lets me know I've got the right tool. I position myself correctly, and I hope this blesses somebody. I officially have prophetic assistance. God have mercy. God have mercy. I did what the prophet said do. I got the bow and arrow, the right tool. I put my hands on it, positioned myself, and then he put his hand on my hand. I've got prophetic assistance. Can I pause parenthetically right there and tell somebody who's trying to finish school, you've got prophetic assistance. Who's trying to finish your book, You've got prophetic assistance. You that are trying to get your health together, I've got prophetic assistance. You that are trying to get your mind back in alignment, you've got prophetic assistance. You that are trying to recover from a divorce, you've got prophetic assistance. You that feel like you're inadequate, you've got prophetic assistance. You that feel like you'll never own a home, you've got prophetic assistance. You that feel like your children won't get it, you've got prophetic assistance. You that feel like you are not good enough, you inadequate, you got insecurities, uh, you got a speech impediment, you got a learning disability, you got prophetic assistance, uh, you dealt with trauma uh, like such as rape, molestation, violation, you got prophetic assistance, uh, you feel suicidal, you got prophetic assistance, uh, you feel overwhelmed, you got prophetic assistance. Uh, if I was in a bit of actual space, I would tell you to look at your neighbor and holler prophetic assistance. You've got prophetic assistance. You've got prophetic assistance. In the month of April, you've got prophetic assistance. It was April Fools a couple of minutes ago. Uh, 42 minutes ago it was April Fools. And the joke is on the enemy. Joke's on you, Satan. I've got prophetic assistance. Joke's on you, enemy. I've got prophetic assistance. I've got prophetic assistance. And I've got, oh my God, because there's a prophetic weight that is resting on every move I make. Because the moment that the king would have shot that bow and arrow, he would have had prophetic assistance. Lord have mercy. So I need somebody to know that the weight of the prophetic is, is resting on your next decisions. The weight of the prophetic is resting on the next moves you make. The weight of prophetic assistance is resting when you go canvas the land. The weight of the prophetic assistance, assistance is sitting on you. When you go sign the deed to the property, you are about to find yourself holding deeds, keys, and and seeds because you've got prophetic assistance. So, so the prophet tells him, the prophet tells him, the prophet tells him, 
He says, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. I'm almost done here. You've got to understand that the first thing that occurred is you got the right tool. You're positioned correctly. You have prophetic assistance. You've got to know where your target is. He opened the window eastward because this is where Syria was. So you got to know where your enemy is located if you're going to get victory. This is not the season of aimless fighting, aimless warfare, aimless battles. You've got to know your target because if you don't know your target, you're going to run the risk of friendly fire. What is friendly fire, Dr. Wilkins? You're going to run the risk of, of hitting people who really have been on your side and you're going to end up hurting them because you did not know who your target was. When you've got misguided emotions, people take hits from you that they shouldn't have taken. When you've got misguided emotions, you don't understand that you're lashing out on people who only thing they were trying to do was help you. you got to know where your target is. So he opened the eastward and Elisha said, shoot. And he shot and he said, the, hey, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. So this particular tool that was shot out was the tool that was, oh God, it was the tool of deliverance because this arrow was the arrow of the Lord's deliverance that was going to rescue them from Syria, that was going to rescue them from the bondage of Syria. Can I help you understand something? When that traditionally speaking, biblically speaking, historically speaking, within the context of this text, anytime you shot a bow and arrow, it was to let your enemy know that invasion was the next option. God, I almost ran to my own house. Oh, God. When you there are some seasons where your enemy needs a non-verbal reminder of who you are in kingdom. Before you show up, oh God, before you come up on the scene, you sometimes need a non-verbal gesture. What is your non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know that I'm in route? What is your non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know I'm going to get victory? What is your non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know I'm not taking this line down? What is your nine God? What's your non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know you can't have my children? What's the non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know you can't have my mind? What is the non-verbal gesture to let the enemy know you cannot have me because I belong to the Lord? Don't stop short. But here's the problem. When you don't understand the severity of the battle, you give limited energy to the execution of the fight. Let me say that again. When you don't understand the severity of the battle, you give little to no energy into the execution of the fight. But when you understand, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is a matter of life and death, you do not stop short. Because Joash shot the arrow and told him, strike the ground. And Joash only struck the ground three times. But there were three enemies. There were more than three enemies. You got to know in this season, I can't afford to stop short. I can't stop until all of it is dead. <laughs> Who is the Holy Ghost talking to? I cannot stop 
unto every aspect of the enemy's plans are dead until every bit of residue, until every bit of uh, 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 debris is completely taken away. I cannot stop short because if I stop short, I get limited victory. If I stop short, I get limited victory. If I stop short, I get limited victory. So no, you can't stop at an associate. Go get the bachelor's. Nope, you can't stop there. Go get the master's. Nope, go get the PhD. Nope, go get the professional certification. Why? Because if you stop short, you only get limited victory. And God is not the God of limited victory. God is the God of total victory. And the prophet got mad at him because he stopped short. He only did it three times. And the prophet said, guess what? He said, you were supposed to shoot until every bit of them were dead. He says, but it is now that you shall smite Syria, but thrice. So you only going to get a partial victory. The devil is a lie. I'm prophesying to somebody tonight that you are not stopping until you get total victory. You are not stopping until you smite every bit of your struggle. You are not stopping until you start to see all ancient demons dead. I mean their imps. I mean everything that is related to it. I'm talking about every variant of your enemy. Every variant of your enemy. Don't you stop short. So I need you to push in prayer. I need you to push in fasting. I need you to push in consecration. Don't you stop short. I'm not stopping until all of it dies. I'm not stopping until I get victory over every bit of it. I'm not stopping until I get a solution uh, for every problem there is that God wants me to solve. I'm not stopping short. Why? Because you're not a failure. You're not less than. You're not the underdog. You are not someone that's not good enough. So don't you stop short. I need some preacher, some prophet, uh, Apostle Angela Dave. Don't you stop short. Lord have mercy. Ellen Craig. Don't you stop short. Jessica Smith, don't you stop short. Hallelujah. Don't you, Joyce Adams, don't stop short. In the name of Jesus, everyone on Clubhouse, don't stop short. Emmanuel, don't stop short. Every leader, don't stop short. Every psalmist, don't stop short. Every prophet, don't stop short. Good God from Zion, who is the Holy Ghost talking to? I won't stop short. I'm going to get everything. I'm going to get every victory. I'm going to get every anointing. Don't stop short. I'm going to get what God wants for me. Don't stop short. I'm going to get what I'm owed. Don't stop short. I know my target. I know my target. Come on here in the comments. I dare you to type your comment, your target. My target is perversion. My target is loneliness. My target is procrastination. My target is lying. My target is doubt. Come on here. What is your target? And when you know your target and you know your tools and you know you got assistance, you don't stop short. You got to be able to tell. I break every generational curse. Stuff from your daddy's side. I break it. Stuff from your mother's side. I break it. Stuff from your grandma's side. I break it. Step from your grandfather's side. I break it. I break childhood traumas. I break adverse, uh, some aces, uh, childhood uh, uh, experience, adverse childhood experiences. I break traumas. I break generational silence where you have been staying quiet and you haven't said anything to anybody. Be healed tonight. Don't stop short. Mandala Boko Shaya. I break it off of you. I break chains up. Chains of insecurity. Chains of doubt. Chains of anxiety. Chains of worry. Don't stop short. So talk only on the lava higher. Don't stop short. Don't stop short. Business owners. Don't stop short. Entrepreneurs. Don't stop short. Single mothers. Don't stop short. Single fathers, uh, don't stop short. Uh, I strike the ground. Uh, I strike the ground uh, and I kill every lie. Uh, I 
I strike the ground and I kill every rumor. I strike the ground and I kill every doubt, self-doubt, external doubt, internal doubt. I strike the ground. Mandala Bakoshia, die where you stand. Obakashia, guilt, die where you stand. Right here, there are three of you that say I want to get saved, that I want to rededicate myself. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. Just type in the comments. Rededication. Just type rededication. Because you backslid. But God says don't stop short. You left the phone. But I call you back. He I hear it in the Holy Ghost. Just type rededication. If that's you, just type rededication. Yeah, I'm coming for you. Rededication. You haven't been praying like you were supposed to. Rededication. You haven't fasted like you were supposed to. Rededication. You might not Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, to somebody's teenage daughter, be healed from bullying, cyber bullying, I kill it today, suicidal issues, I kill them today, body shaming, I break it this morning, oh my man, the Absalom spirit, the Athalia spirit, the spirit of Delilah, the spirit of Python, I break it, I break it, I I strike the ground and I come for every snake in the grass. Mandela Bokoshaya. Don't stop short. Don't stop short. Don't stop short. Namakosiaya. Mandamakosiaya. Don't stop short. Hamandela Bokosiaya. Don't stop short. Hamakosia Namahaya. Sicknesses and diseases. Here come my sotomaya. Mandala mokosiaya. Amanda de Bioshaya. Makosiaya. Breast cancer, we kill you. And the makosiaya. Dementia, we kill you. Parkinson's, we kill you. Old AIDS, we kill you. Blood pressures, we kill you. Matala mokosia namahaya. Manana namakosita babandioshia. Some of you need to go get your children right now. And you need to lay hands on your children. They may not understand it in the moment. But I hear the Lord say, go get the oil and lay hands on your children. Because there's a new cup. There's a new covering. There are some of you that need to lay hands on your lower back and say, I won't stop short till I get my healing. Vivian Lewis, I pray for him. I pray that God does it in him. I pray that God turns the tables in his favor. Mandala boko shia da na mahaya, ora makanda la boho yala makaya le beko yala makaya, yana na mandi di oko yala mahaya, yana na mandi osoya. Tumors of all kind. I command you to dry up and dissipate. Mandala na boho yala makaya, yana na boho shia da na mahaya. Lung cancer. I come against you. Diabetes. I come against you. Heart attacks and strokes. I bind you that you die where you stand. Ora mandala makanda na di osoya la mahaya. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I won't stop short. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 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 We won't stop short. Creating us a clean heart. Renewing us a right spirit. Purge us with hyssop. Oh God, make us white as snow. Oh, no, 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 Yes, Lord Jesus, uh, shine the light from heaven uh, and expose every infirmity, uh, expose every dis-ease, uh, expose every stronghold. Uh, we bind the strong man. Uh, we bind the strong man. Uh, we bind murderers, uh, murderers and robbers and muggers uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh my we bind witches and warlocks huh, in the midnight hour. Huh, we dethrone huh, the horse and the rider. Huh, the horse and the rider. Huh, the horse and the rider. Huh, 
the trans the means by which evil is traveling. We stop you now. We pray for Ukraine. We say don't stop short, God. We pray for drugs. Over my Kosoto La Bahia. We come against premature death. And we say longevity of life is our portion. For you said in your word, with long life you shall satisfy us. And we give your name glory. And we give your name honor. And we give your name praise. And we thank you. Don't stop short. Don't stop short. Because you are one strike away from destroying the residue of your last battle. I need you to declare it. I'm one strike away. I'm one strike away. I'm one strike away. I'm, hey, glory to God. I got to go. I'm one strike away. 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 I'm my Kosiaya. I won't strike out. Yeah. Oh God. I won't strike out. Mata Mahaya. I won't strike out and give up. Oh God. I won't strike out. Mata Mahaya. But I'm about to make the enemy strike out. Yep. I'm gonna make the enemy strike out. I'm gonna make the enemy Haya. So Rabakaya. Hiana Mahaya. His his last swing was his last swing. Hey, hey, I got to get out of here. His last swing was his last swing. His last swing was his last swing. I don't know who needs to hear that. His last swing was his last swing. Doesn't mean that he won't try again, but his last effective swing was his last swing. My God, I'm not going out like that because I hit my target. I got my tools and I got prophetic assistance in Jesus' name. Dr. Davis is back on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, you can go ahead on and change my name. It's Doc. It's it's Angel. <laughs> it's a. It's, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, man of God. Uh, listen, real quick. Uh, I'm sorry, change name. I'm no, sorry. no, no, no. Listen, okay. Listen, real quick. The one there is one for rededication in the room, and so if if y'all can uh, help me bring them up so you can go ahead on to minister them. They are uh, chatted in the back channel. So there is one for rededication. I believe it's more because normally when the prophet speaks, they not they they are not off, they're not missed. So do not be ashamed because this is what this is all about. You don't have to be, you don't have to stay stuck in what you've been in. That is the enemy's isolation camp. You need to come on back over into the family of God. Listen, even the prodigal son went and lost. He came to his sisters at some point. That means he went backwards too. I'm sure at some point, all of us that's believers, whatever we are, has went back before. So this is a good time. I'm gonna turn it back over to you so that you can address that because there is one and the, I believe there's more but I'm gonna let you address that thank you so much Dr. Wilkins hallelujah we thank God for those that are rededicating their life listen I'm telling you I'm telling you rededication just simply means I got to get back in alignment I just got to get back in the vein so if that's you in the back channel on clubhouse or right here just type rededication because I know what I heard in the Holy Ghost I promise you there is more than one and I don't want you to go to bed and you have not reset and recalibrated and revived your relationship with them. So if that's you, just type rededicate in the chat. Because I'm telling you, and I thank God for the one, but I know there are about two or three more of y'all that are coming because I hear the Holy Ghost so clearly that I'm about to reset and recalibrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep. Come on. Come on in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on. Yep. Come on. If that's you. I call you right on in. Come on, the one more of you that says that's me. Come on, it's just rededication right there. Rededication, rededication. It's not about platforms. Hallelujah. It's not about it's not about preaching engagements, but it's about souls. Come on, rededication, rededication, rededication. Come on here, that's you. Come on here, just type rededication in the chat. I'm not leaving without you. I'm 
not leaving this spot without you. I got one in the back channel on Clubhouse and the other right here. There's one more. Hallelujah. I heard three. So, Lord, might be more than one. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If that's you, just type rededication. Rededication. Two rededications in the chat on Clubhouse and one in Facebook. Told you three. Come on here. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you there may be more. Come on. You may be saying what does rededication look like in this time frame? Come on here. I'm telling you what that looks like. That looks like getting realigned in the word, getting secured in a place where you can have a local leader and being able to have a team of support. I'm telling you, if that's you, come on here. If that's you, there may be two more after the three that say that I'm going to rededicate myself. If that's you, just type the word rededication simply because that lets the enemy know that I fell off, but I'm getting dedicated and getting back on my focus. I'm getting back on my spiritual grind. Come on here. I'm getting back. I'm getting back in alignment. I'm getting back in alignment. I'm calling you back because you got a work to do. You got an assignment to do. There are more. Come on here. Yep. There are. Come on here. I'm telling you, I'm not leaving this spot until you come on back in the fold. You, you left the fold because you didn't trust leaders. You left the fold because you said you didn't trust the church, but I'm calling you back. I am calling you back. Come on here. Come on here. I'm telling you because it's it's in the rededication. Your your the net, your future is in your rededication. And I call you back in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yep. Hallelujah. 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 I pray for you as you're rededicating yourself, realigning yourself with the word of the Lord, with the way of the Lord. Not that you are completely lost, but it's just a matter of getting back on track like you need to be. That's what rededication is. So if that's you, just type the word rededication. You know if God has been nudging you and you haven't been praying like you're supposed to. Come on here. You haven't been fasting like you're supposed to. You got comfortable during the pandemic and you haven't been in a building since. Come on here. Rededication. Realignment. Come on here. I'm telling you, it is the best decision you can make. Strike the ground and let the enemy know I'm coming for everything that you thought that you wanted to owe. Hallelujah. There's another one. Come on here. There we go. Come on here right there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank God for him. Rededication. Rededication. That's it. Rededication. 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 To God be the glory. Rededication. If we cannot do this for the souls, we need to stop doing it. Six in total. Five in Clubhouse. One on Facebook. Come on here. I'm telling you this. This is the season of rededication. Hallelujah. 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 What that means is you are just deciding to come back in alignment with the things of God. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says heaven rejoices over one. So I'm thankful for the six. Listen, I'm calling them back. I'm calling them back, whether it's seven or eight. Come on here. See, this is the thing that the enemy gets mad. Nobody's auctioning you for a seed. No one's promising you some false hope and telling you you got to sow a thousand dollars. There's seven right there. Come on here. Because here's the thing. Salvation is the goal. Salvation is the goal. Salvation is the goal. Some of you need to get delivered from thinking that the post requirement of a prophecy is that you got to give a seed. You better stop believing these lying prophets and get healed. Oh God, get healed, get healed, get healed. Pay your tithe at your local assembly. Pay your offering. Keep your bills paid. Yeah, come on here. Put the false prophet out of business tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm trying to tell you, it's about the soul. It's about the soul. Salvation is the goal. Salvation is the goal. Salvation is the goal. Come on here. I'm I'm summoning you and begging you to come into safety. Oh, God, come into his safety net. Hallelujah. 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 The righteous run therein are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Come to the strong tower tonight. Yep, we thank God for the seven. There may be three more, but I'm telling you, rededication. Reded just type it. Type it in the back chat. Type it in the Facebook Live. That's what it's about. Hallelujah. I know when I've done my assignment correctly because there's a soul attached to the word. And God has let me know that there are seven that needed to understand that you have been the, you got the right tool. You got the right posture. You got prophetic assistance. And you are about to kill everything from your past. And you are not a victim of anything you've done. So to God be the glory in Jesus' name. And we thank God for more that might come throughout the course of this whole strike thon In Jesus' name, Dr. Thomas is back in your hands. My God, today, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the return. That that is the best decision that you could have ever made. We give God praise. Y'all begin to pray over the man of God. We thank you. I mean, he came out the gate blazing with what is going on. But to those, to the to the uh uh we we know that some of you all didn't want to come up, but it don't matter as long as you in the room. Faith come by hearing. And how was how can they hear unless a preacher be sent? Listen, you heard it, you responded, and we are excited. Is there anybody celebrating that seven has returned? That seven has rededicated. Come on, we got to give God praise. I'm telling you, it'll be just like your child that was out there on Wayward, and all of a sudden, all they was dealing with, they decided to turn and go in the direction of the Lord. So we got to give God praise. Jessica Smith, thank God. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Listen, I remember a time when I had lost my mind. I was living in the streets. I was cracked out and everything, but there was a God that still had a purpose on me when I didn't even know who I was. And I'm here to tell you, God don't condemn you. He wants you to come in. So we are, we are extending love and grace to you. You can be, and I heard even while he was ministering, I heard you can begin again because Somebody was getting ready to stop tonight, man of God. Somebody was getting ready to quit. Somebody was getting ready to cause an accident from stopping, putting on the brakes too soon and cause everything in with them and behind them a collision that wasn't even worth it. So you stop that thing tonight, this morning, and we give God praise. We give God praise for, uh, let, let me see who's up here. We see Kevin, Yolanda, Velda, Anthony, Sharon, and Charlene. Listen, God and then what's on Clubhouse we certainly give God glory honor and praise listen once you come back once you rededicate once you repent listen don't live in what you did live in the forgiveness don't live in what you did live in the love of God listen do not allow anyone to hold you to your past don't stop short of God's word concerning you don't stop short of the assignment that God has on your life. Don't stop short of getting all you can in, in, the, in the process of walking your word out with God. Listen, you are the prophetic word of God and what the enemy meant for evil. God put a stop to it tonight because he's going to get some good out of this. There is in after this. So we give God praise. That man of God, hallelujah. Oh, oh my God. So, 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 now you use your arrows of deliverance. We thank God for the blood. We thank God for salvation. My God, today we don't want you, we don't want nobody running the risk of having everybody else uh, uh, be hurt by our bad decisions. So I thank God tonight, tonight, tonight that your prophetic trauma has been set free. Your prophetic trauma comes to a halt tonight and I'm telling you, he awakened the one that was in procrastination. He awakened the one that was lost by the wayside. He well, he awakened the one. So I thank him for this midnight watch for coming on mm, 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 and being about the father's business. We certainly give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. Listen, listen, you seven. All I can do is say, my God, today, welcome back into the fold. Welcome back to the That's that that is the best decision that literally literally uh, uh could have been made. So what we want to do, um, well, I'm not sure if he's still here. Since they are here, would you like to lead them uh back back to Christ? Uh Dr. Wilkins, if if not, uh if the oil was on you, you can do Hallelujah. that. Yeah, free reign, come on. Hallelujah. We thank God. And we thank God for those who have decided to come back. We know that our ABCs of salvation is to accept, believe, and confess. You know, we accept in our heart, believe, and we confess with our mouth, and we repent of our sins, and we understand that we are turning from our wicked ways, and I say inclusively we, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And oftentimes we as preachers make a mistake and assume that you have fallen into such deep, desperate sins or something of that nature. And your rededication might just be, I need to get back in alignment with God um, and get back on track. So I, I, I usher you back into the safety of his assurance that I thank God that you are being developed and being cultivated in every aspect. And I pray that the power of God 
meet you right where you are and that you are that hallelujah that you are thank you lord that you are revived in your spirit that you get your passion back that you get your smile back that you get the, the thank you lord uh thank you lord that you get that you get the strength of god back and i pray in the name of the lord jesus that you continue to grow in him and no thank you thank you holy ghost god says to tell some of you tonight i'm not mad at you seven is the number of completion so watch this all of that stuff that you've dealt with god says it's complete it's complete it, it's complete it's complete it's finalized it's finished it no longer has a hold on you and so i thank god for you and i promise you the one of you that's literally struggling and battling with whether i rededicate i heard the holy ghost say tell you you might as well come on because here's the reality after completion is a new beginning so to god be the glory for the ones who have come hallelujah thank you so much oh prophet every just uh into the room we certainly give honor listen 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 uh there are no words. We know that this is nothing but the Holy Ghost. I didn't do the picking. He did. All I did was yielded and God began to give favor. So I, I cannot uh, thank him without thanking the woman of God, Prophet Octavia Bond. She came all the way through and her words did not fall to the ground man of god i'm so humbled in my heart that you will come and bless us and i mean I, your passion your truth your authenticity it is just such an honor and a privilege and i'm sure i wouldn't want to mess up nobody's testimony listen be a blessing to this man testify follow him uh, let him know what this has done because my God, and then we celebrate uh, our family members coming back into the fold because in such with some of us, we've all have fallen astray and fell back, but you can begin again and you can start again. So we certainly give God praise. Uh, hallelujah. We have, uh, we have so many people in the room. I'm not even going to belay that hour uh, out of respect you all have been laboring with, with us you all have been showing up uh and and i thank you i thank you i thank you listen if you want to continue following this strike -a thon and destroying evil altars touch that green button at the top of strike force bhs touch that green button that way when the next strike starts you will get an alert and you can just come on in the room we certainly cover him we pray over him we plead the blood over him we put a wall of fire all over him i thank him for the oil of mm, my god i thank you for the poor i thank you for your passion i thank you for the ammunition listen he said you're one strike away Please don't stop short. Do not stop short. Do not stop short. And that is his word. Let that resonate. Let not, don't just let it resonate. Let it marinate. Let it become your posture. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do real quick before we begin to get out of here, I want to hear from uh, two or three people that's in the room on the platform. Give me about two or three minutes because I just want to hear. I'm not sure. Is the is, is Prophetess Nicole, are you still awake? I know you came back in just to support. I feel like I don't know whether he stepped into the oil that was in here or he came and blew another fuse. But I'm so grateful that he came. Uh, are you available, Prophetess Nicole? She might be slayed out. Oh, hallelujah. Come on on uh, on this platform before I talk ex um apostle Emanuela to give words. Jackie J, are you woke? Are you here? Are you here? Come on, let's talk to us. Let's talk to us. Let's talk to the man of God. I just, you know, um, just very um encouraged to be able to you know, when he was talking about, uh, you know, knowing your target, you know, that is so uh, important. And that's what resonated with me going through and and knowing my target and not just knowing my target, but accepting um, that certain things are my target. Um, you know, there are the, sometimes we don't want to except that certain things or certain people are an enemy but you know i'm in a place right now where i'm truly just accepting um 
people for where they are in my life. And so knowing that target so that I would know how to strike and know how to um, navigate and re, um, maneuver with those uh, individuals. So I just thank God for that on tonight. Thank him for what all he has done for the seven souls who rededicated their lives to Christ on tonight. What an awesome um, move of God. This, um, this, and all these sessions have been in it, but especially on tonight with those um, rededicating them their lives. I rejoice with heaven with them for them on tonight. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Prophetess Sherry, are you awoke? If Listen, if you're in the audience and you want to, you can just raise your hand and we can bring you up. Uh, this word has resonated with you. Even if you're one of the ones that rededicated your life, this is your opportunity um, to share. Uh, Evangelist Pam, are you there? I'm not sure. So again, again, uh, Prophet Eric, good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being in the room, in the room. Uh, Cruz, are you there? Okay. Well, that, mm, 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 mm. well, I can tell you for me, I will not be stopping short. I will definitely tell you that. Uh, uh, again, we want to be a blessing to the man of God, my God, today. Thank you so much. Uh, Octavia, you can give us a couple of words. I mean, you know him, so my God, my God. You know, actually, yeah, when I was listening to him, he was actually confirming some of the stuff you... Okay, I'm just done. Go ahead. <laughs> For me, it was the keys, the seed, and the deed. Now, when he said that, I was like, okay, really? The keys, the seeds, and the deeds. But anyway, we thank God for the word on tonight. Uh, and, I, and I got to quit hanging around the church people because I don't normally say on tonight. I really hate that on tonight, but I enjoyed that word tonight. So, Dr. Wilkins, thank you for accepting um, the invitation. I know that you'd be busy, um, but when, when I reached out to him, he just, he said, okay, and we appreciate that. My brother came in here and preached tonight. You hear me? Yes, he did. Uh, Prophet E, I saw your microphone open. You got something to say? Because you know you'll come no. in and slay the whole. No, I'm just clapping. I'm concurring. I'm no, I'm talking about uh, Prophet Eric. I saw his mic open. I ain't know if he had something to say. You know, he be on the mountaintop with Jesus, and uh, when he come Stop. down, he always Stop. have a Stop. a word. Stop. <laughs> I love that, me some eat him. I love you as well. That's so funny. <clears throat> I was just coming in to, to support. Um, I mean, I believe day one I came. I'm, I can't remember, Miss Angela, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the other day I came in and we um, <clears throat> spoke and it was absolutely powerful. Such a good room. And again, I was sharing this before, and I'll, I don't mind reinstating it just in case there are new listeners in, but just destroying the demonic altars is really just coming out of agreement with things that are demonic covenants. You get what I'm saying? It's really just demonic covenants. And, you know, there was another room last night, and I was just also sharing in there, like, guys, you have to understand, many people have been eagles in the cage because you have been so conditioned to these ways of doing things that is really not God. And you can't pray for manifestations, miracles, signs, and wonders, breakthrough, mercy, and all these wonderful things that the foundation is perverted and and impure you get what i'm saying so it's like therefore if you're going to move forward with the momentum of god you have to come out of agreement with things that fight against the will of god initially for your life and until you do those things you will always be at a place where you repeat vicious cycles because you may be fighting the fruit of the demonic altar but if you don't uproot that altar and you come out of covenant agreement with that those fruits will still be able to produce and that will be the harvest of a thing until you actually take the initiative to come out of agreement and not only just that <clears throat> Some things may not necessarily just be what you've opened up the door to, but it could be things that your father, your mother, your grandparents, and even the forefathers have even established before. And it's, what it is called is generational consequences, which is things that your family have opened the door to, and you're just reaping the harvest of their 
their seeds that they've sown. And it's necessary that you do those things. And it's okay because a lot of times people don't want to say, well, oh, well, your daddy, your mama did this. They was entangled in this type of situation. But you need to ask God for a spirit of truth to hit someone in the bloodline that would be bold enough to come to you or even have the conversation with you to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, your mom, your dad did tap into this type of stuff. And this is the reason why you're battling with this because that spirit has transferred and it is trying to even release generational addictions in the bloodline. So until you destroy the demonic covenant, the demonic altar will always be established. That's why when you look at people in the prophetic, they can prophesy all day and then those demons come right back to you a little bit stronger simply because after you come from up under that anointing, those demons are on assignment to reinstate that same covenant that you just prayed against simply because those demons now look at you as a because they've been anchored in you for so long so anytime and that's really why i've been praying even for miss angela as well because anytime you start doing uh agendas like this for the kingdom of god which is destroying evil altars which means that you are now positioning yourself for a greater level of attacks here's why not necessarily because you just <clears throat> doing this but it's really because you are causing so many people to get free from things that other people have once just let linger in their life and when you do those things hell and his imps and the devil himself is pissed off with you simply because you are doing something and you're reversing the curse of every word curse that the enemy himself has tried to imprint on so many believers so until you come out of the agreement of those things, and when you come out, well, when you come out of agreement with those things, then the will of God will be completely established in your life, and it will be so. You get what I'm saying? Simply because a lot of people say that they're saved, but what are you filled with? Because a lot of people are not filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. They're filled with their own agenda. They're filled with they're filled with their own theological ways of how they want to do things. But the Bible says, "Behold, I will do a new thing." So until he does that new thing in you, you must submit to the will of God and go forth. But I'm excited and I bless God for everyone in the room because I understand that even as she continues to do these rooms, that God himself is going to cause forth a strong awakening, a strong shifting for those of you who really need breakthrough in your life and even in the areas of your altars. And I pray that the altar that you would dwell at will be an altar that will burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost and it will never burn out. And I love y'all. I tell y'all, you trying to pull me up on the stage. I be trying to pull up. <laughs> and we're praying for you. I know that you lost one of your best friends, and we are yes. praying for you and his family. And we're praying for the industry because the industry has lost someone great. So we're praying for the entertainment industry. Thank you. We're praying for you, and we're praying for his family. Thank you so much. That was so needed because, as well, like it's so crazy. I tell you, he was literally just at my house, like two days before that happened. So it, it was a little surreal and it was hitting me in waves. So I'll be fine one minute and next minute. I'm just like, oh my God, I can't believe my friend. But I mean, all is well and I do find strength in God. So I am tremendously grateful and I thank God and I honor God for you guys so very much. Apostle Angela is back on you. Yes, thank you so much, um, Prophet Eric. And yes, we are definitely be um, covering you in prayer. Like the woman of God said, you know, um, uh, you know, just before we close out, this man of God said, don't stop short. And he said, number one, you have to have the right tools. Number two, position yourself correctly. Number three, you officially have prophetic assistance. The joke is on the enemy. Number four, you got to know where your target is if you're going to get to the victory. We don't want to be misfiring and hitting the wrong people. And I thank God that the joke is on the enemy. Amen. This is a matter of life and death, so you can't stop stop until you wipe them all out. Wipe everything out that was set to destroy you and your bloodline. Do not stop. Do not stop. Do not stop. Dr. Wilkins, I don't know if you want to have any last words before we close out. Again, I honor you again. I will definitely um, be con contacting you after we come off of this. And uh, okay, I'll, I'll, Apostle Emanuela, I'm going to ask you to uh, close us out in prayer if he doesn't want to have any last words. And my whole thing is beautiful too. Come on, Apostle Emanuela. All right. To God be the glory. Um, God is good. This was an awesome, awesome time. Dr. Wilkins, a phenomenal job. To God be the glory. God use you so much. And I I was blown away. What I what I took away, my nugget, my nugget 
my nugget was, you know, when you have prophetic assistance, that is, that's, I needed that. I, I thank God for you. I thank God for your life. And I thank God that you're sound. I thank God that you're sound. You're sound. You're sound. So let's close out in prayer because we have to be back in this room again because we are not done with the strike of thought. We're not done with the strike of thought. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time together, Lord God. We bless you. God, thank you so much for being so faithful, so kind. Thank you, God. Father God, for the knowledge, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we know how people that perish because of it, Lord God, lack of it. God, we have accepted the knowledge. We won't reject the knowledge, Lord God. We will apply the knowledge of God. Father, that we will apply you in our in our lives, oh God. Father, that we will put you first and keep you first, God. We will put you first and keep you first. You will rest, rule, and abide, Lord God, on the thrones of our hearts, oh God. God, I pray for everybody as we love us for one another. Oh God, but from there, from your presence, continue to keep us. I pray for sweet sleep for everyone in this room. Sweet sleep. God, you promise, oh God, that you will, oh God, you give us sweet sleep, oh God, because you neither slumber nor sleep. So I pray for sweet sleep. I pray for rest in everybody's body. God, and we say, Lord God, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us fathers before his presence and his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. God bless you, everybody. God keep you is my prayer. Have a beautiful morning. See you later on. This room is closing in five, four, three, two, one. Shalom.